Hello everyone, it is The Vicar here, and this Sunday is a very special Sunday. Some of you who were around for the Bible study period last week maybe were around for the Confirmation Examination Sunday, which was uh, great. The three confirmands this year all did very well, and that now means that Confirmation Sunday is this Sunday. We hope to see you there for all of that, but it's worth considering what exactly is confirmation? Some things to think about uh, as you arrive this weekend. Well, in the ELS Catechism, which is really Luther's small catechism and some explanation, uh, they answer that question for you. It's really two parts of what is confirmation. I'm going to look at both of those parts for you. Confirmation is a rite in which individuals confess the faith into which they have been baptized. That's the first part. So that's one thing that is important to know about confirmation, is that it's really confessing the faith into which they already were baptized. Meaning that the vows that they take in the rite of confirmation, now we're talking R-I-T-E, right, that... Uh, in, in these vows, they are not really adding to or saying anything different than what they said already at their baptism. Our baptism itself is a vow to God as well. It's, it's a vow of faithfulness along with the gift of faith that we receive, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's one important thing to remember is that it is not uh, something adding to baptism. It's not saying, well, after, you know, 12, 13, 14 years, now you can see that baptism worked. Baptism always works and doesn't add anything else um, here in confirmation. That's one important part to remember. And of course, the second kind of major misconception often is that confirmation is the end. Confirmation is a graduation. It's the end of instruction. And that's where the second part comes in. Confirmation is not only a rite in which individuals confess the faith into which they have been baptized, it's also where they show that they are properly instructed to receive the Lord's Supper. And that's the main thing that we can see that changes uh, from before confirmation to after confirmation, and that's that these students now, going forward, will receive the Lord's Supper. A great gift of this church is now offered to them. And the reason we take them through all that instruction is that since the Bible tells us to prepare and to examine ourselves to receive the Lord's Supper, that means that we recognize our sinfulness, our need for a Savior, to recognize that the forgiveness of the sin of our sins is offered to us in the sacrament, and also that we are confessing unity of faith, not holding to false beliefs, and so an understanding of what Scripture teaches is important to express that unity. And so we might get the impression though that since confirmation doesn't really add anything to baptism, maybe we could just do away with it. And it is not something commanded in the Bible. We could, in freedom, do away with confirmation. But because of the view to the future and the view of that gift of, of Holy Communion that they will now receive, I would argue that it is an important thing to continue, an important practice to continue. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that us as a society, there are a lot fewer roles that are given to young people. That it's a lot less clear what your role, your goal in life should be. And part of that is because there are a lot fewer, I guess, coming of age events in people's lives as there may have used to be. Uh, fewer steps in growing up. And confirmation really is one of those steps where we can recognize this is a full-fledged member of the church. They're going to come up for communion. This is a coming-of-age moment. And with that, as a confirmation, as a congregation, we should take this opportunity to really welcome them and realize these are three, in this case, young men who we should pray for, continue to support, recognize as members of our congregation, and uh, help and aid them in any way to continue to strengthen the faith that they received in their baptism. So for all those reasons, I would love for you all 
to be here this Sunday to support these men and to go in, and going forward to continue to have them in our prayers, to help them any way you can. Uh, it would be a blessing both to you and to these young men and really to the entire church on earth. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday.